go. Come on, Elmer, let's go. Let's hit this shit. Old guys training tip. How many body parts a day do you do in the gym? I'm talking about main body parts. I do the small ones, the uh, abs, calves, forearms, and traps. I try to do them four to five times a week. But I'm talking your main body part per day. I personally feel that if I do more than one, that that second one sometimes lags a little bit. Now, I do do buys and tries together to make it a five-day week. Um, but I'm more or less supersetting those within each other. And starting sometimes, mostly with buys, but sometimes starting with tries. And then supersetting a, an exercise for, for, for biceps or the respective opposite whichever one I do first so I kind of don't really count that as doing two body parts I just say arms in my head I'm doing arms today and I I do buys and tries but if I wanted to do like chest and shoulders together my shoulder thing would probably suck if I did a good chest workout so I feel that my age especially uh, over 50 to, for me to do one main body part a day is the best way to do it and to do it once a week. Some people like to do everything twice a week. I don't know if you need that much, especially if you're over 40 or over 50. I don't think uh, that's, that's something that's sustainable over a long period of time, another 10 years or so. I think if you do one main body part a day and you do your other stuff, obviously we've spoken about it on this series before, cardio and stuff. Um, and the uh, the little body parts, but the way I break my thing down is I do arms, buys and tries. I'm trying to do different push pull. Um, you know, I flip on and off uh, each day. So buys and tries obviously are going to be one of each. I do chest on Tuesday, back on Wednesday, shoulders on Thursday, and legs. And I don't do legs hard. That's like my fucking kind of like my bullshit day i do legs on friday and if i need to skip something it's usually friday um guineas just do chest and arms you know that fuck legs you know I'll, we wear long shorts as long as our calves look good we don't give a shit about our fucking thighs but that to me works you know if maybe for you you feel like you know that first body part you're doing you're, you're doing some good pre-exhaustion with that second one i to me it, it would probably make it a much less strenuous workout and i probably wouldn't get as much out of it and i've done that when i i've missed days i'm going away or something so i got to squeeze a couple of things and i'll usually do uh, shoulders and back the same day when i need to squeeze two into one and um i kind of do different things more of the machines than the free weights when i do something like that just so i can i feel that i can get a better full range of motion uh doing stuff even if i hit one of them harder before that so if i do my back first then i do my shoulders i might be a little tired i might be shortening my my range of motion a little if i do the machines i can keep it at a weight where i can control it and do it easier and get my 12 to 15 reps instead of barely getting 10 with a bar or something like that but that's the exception rather than the rule uh, one body part a day is my advice as an old guy. Here's my old guy's training tip. Do one major body part a day, and you don't really need to do them twice a week. If you say, oh, my, th my uh, triceps are leg, and I want to do them twice a week, spread them out. Then Monday, Friday, you know, or Monday, Thursday, if you will, because then you're going to turn around the weekend and, you know, the days off in between. I feel that one body part a day doing it once a week is sufficient at this age if unless you're one of these competing guys and stuff like that if you're just doing it for yourself I think that should be enough hey this old guy's training tip is brought to you by pro fit gym it's pro dash fit deer park dot com pro fit pro dash fit and y dot com also check them out I will be going to this gym permanently the gym that I go to now uh, is closing at the end of August. And I've wanted to go to ProFit, but you know what it is? 
you get used to a place and this place is closer than ProFit is to me. It's only adding a few extra minutes to my ride, but I'm a fucking lazy old fuck, right? But I'm excited to be going to ProFit. Kefis has been going there for a few weeks and he, you know, I know about it from uh, doing our pop-ups and our lives and stuff there. So I will be at ProFit and I'm really excited about uh, going there because they got some amazing fucking stuff. Hey, speaking of ProFit, you can find their ad right here in the uh, in your Muscle Sport Mag if the, after you subscribe. Go to musclesportmag.com slash store. 24-7, 365. I don't, do they have locks? Maybe not. They don't need them. They're always open. So go to it's uh, pro-fitdeerpark.com. Check them out. And go to musclesportmag.com slash store. $32 a year. Free shipping in the U.S. International shipping. Five or eight dollars per issue depending on where you are. And we will see you next time. Mark Lobiter here watching Muscle Sport TV. In our last episode of USFL Extra Point, we were looking at the uh, teams and possibly which ones would be the home and away schedule ones. Uh, as far as I could tell, if you didn't see that one, the only ones that I really thought were uh, a good choice would have been the Michigan Panthers playing somewhere other than Detroit to avoid the uh, obvious uh, the NFL team in the same city thing. But looking at the old USFL, because uh, the new USFL is going to have the same uh, teams and stuff like that. Now they only had uh, eight teams this year. They did not state anything about expansion or changing any of them. But in my opinion, a great change would be uh, the Maulers out and the Oakland Invaders in. And for obvious reasons, the Raiders moved to Vegas. Uh, to me, that was a, a, not a smart move. They had one of the best home field advantages in the league with the black hole and the crazy fans with all the makeup and all of that stuff. So... Um, definitely Oakland couldn't support uh, a team. And if you look back at the old uh, USFL from 83 to 85, the attendance for the in Oakland Invaders was pretty good overall. In 1983, they were the fourth highest team, averaging 31,000 a game. And they totaled 280,000. In year two... Went down a little bit, 23,000 to 212 total. Obviously, you know, the first year things are new. People are curious to go see it. And in the last year of the original USFL, 1985, the Oakland Invaders uh, dropped down to 17,000 and 157,000. Uh, 10th best in the league. And uh, uh, the year before, I don't think I gave the number. Uh, but the Invaders were the 12th best in the league in uh, in that middle season in 84. So if you just look at the first season, obviously um, they did very well. Where would they play? Could they, would they play in the Oakland Coliseum? Is there a smaller venue available in that area? 
Um, I I really think that if 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 you look at the teams in the league from back then, uh, Oakland is the one that stands out that probably would be supportive of a team considering they did lose the Raiders to Vegas. You know, originally L.A. Was, there was always. Uh, you know, dangling and stuff. The, the, the Raiders are Oakland. Come on. So, Oakland Invaders, I think, should be in the new USFL in year two and be one of those teams that plays uh, the, the, the home and away schedule. This USFL Extra Points being brought to you by T. Michael Apparel, one of our longtime sponsors all the way back from day one in 2008. That's T. M. I. C. H. E-A-L, not the common spelling of Michael. I always look down to make sure I don't screw that up because it uh, it's confusing. But just go on the homepage, Muscle Sport Mag, and click on the link. Or, of course, if you subscribe to our magazine, they have prime real estate, front inside cover, uh, right there for T. Michael. Go to musclesportmag.com slash store and check out uh, what you can get there. $32 a year free shipping in the United States for a uh, subscription and we ship worldwide. $5 to Canada and $8 elsewhere per issue for shipping. Shipping went up but my prices have stayed the same. Obviously free stayed the same and then the international rates going up. We will see you on the next episode. Anyone can see Nothing really matters Nothing really matters to me